Beautiful day out there today, so I thought I'd pop into the Oracle office. I normally work from home. As you saw, I had a bit of drama getting in. I couldn't remember my access code, but that brought up the topic of security. One of the good things with a simple access code like that is no clues are given to me as to what the code might be. If I get it wrong, there's no feedback telling me that this is what the right one might be. However, when it comes to database security, that is a common mistake that a lot of people make. In fact, the worst mistake that people make is when they have all of their objects in a particular schema and then they give that schema and that schema's password out to general usage. Uh, application code uses it, even ad hoc queries using it. Uh, there's a blog post of mine which I'll link somewhere up here or maybe up there showing that effectively there are people out there that honestly believe that just giving the schema password out to the general public is not a dangerous thing to do. If you can make even just the simplest change to the way applications and people access your application, have a schema that owns all the objects, but no one ever connects as that schema. They connect as a secondary schema that has the appropriate grants on objects in that other schema, the owning schema, I would call it. Even that simple thing protects you against things like truncate and drop. Obviously, if you're giving privileges such as delete an update to this secondary account, then yes, there's the risk there that people could still update or delete the wrong data, but at least you've protected yourself from structural changes. The question then becomes, what do I do with this schema that owns all my objects? How do I stop people from connecting to that schema? Sure, I could come up with a nonsensical password, but any password eventually could possibly be brute force hacked. And the moment I have a nonsensical password, it means it's probably gonna be written down somewhere, unfortunately. One of the things you can do is lock a particular account. And this has been a common practice to increase security of schemas that own objects. But unlike the security door out there, locking an account, believe it or not, actually opens up a potential security risk. Let me explain. The security door out there, as I said, gave me no clues as to what the correct or incorrect code was. When I try to connect to an account and that account has been locked, I get the following error. You might be thinking, well, that's fine. That keeps my account nice and secure. But what has been revealed? The fact that the database said the account is locked has confirmed that this account actually exists. Yes, you couldn't connect to it, but it has revealed to a potential hacker that the account is actually present in your database. That's a risk because if a hacker finds some other mechanism of getting access to your database, they now know potential schemas or accounts to target. If an account is locked, there's a very good chance it owns sensitive objects. So you've revealed a bit of information that you didn't want to to a potential hacker. The solution to this lies in 18C or above. You can create an account that has no authentication facilities. The benefit here is whilst the account for all intensive purposes is still locked, the difference is when someone tries to connect as that schema, they get the familiar invalid username or password. You've revealed nothing about the existence of that account to any potential malicious people. So first and foremost, please don't let anyone ever connect as your schema, even if it's application code. Have at least a separation into a secondary schema to prevent that kind of access. Secondly, if you're locking accounts to protect access to schemas that own objects, think about switching to the no authentication facility. It can be done with a simple alter, and that way you're not revealing information that you'd rather not to potential hackers. Anyway, back to the nice view for me. 